I will be walking you through a step-by-step -step Google My Business, Google Business Profile Optimization for 2023. As you know, Google My Business is now called Google Business Profile, and they've also updated how you optimize and update your your actual business listing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take you through a step by step by step process on how you can go from the beginning until end to optimize everything from the name of the business, the categories, the service area, the images. I'll talk about reviews. I'll also give you some tool recommendations to make your life easier. I'll cover everything. So I don't want to waste any time. We will get directly into it right now. So as you know, this is what it is going to look like when you go ahead and start searching for your business. So if you were to come up here to the nine dots in the right-hand corner inside of your Google, my, uh, Google account, and you're searching for your Google business profile, in the top right-hand side, what you'll see is right here, this is the, the home, the Google business storefront, right, in blue. You would click on this, and it will bring you to a screen that looks identical to this, all right? Now, what has changed here is there is no longer a, you know, a UI, so you can log into the back end. They've also made it very difficult to get the uh, complimentary website, but you still have access to it. All right. So let's go ahead and just point out a couple of things here. If you take a look here, all right, you can see that there's the profile. You can read your reviews, messages, photos, performance, advertise, edit your products, your services, booking calls, and Q&A. Now there is a drop down right here, as you can see. And if you click on that, you can also add an update. Now an update could be an event, an offer, or a post. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then also you can ask for reviews. What this will do is it will simply give you that share link uh, that you used to be able to get and share. Something that has changed with the platform is when you are on Google Organic, as you can see here, there is no longer a share link. There used to be a blue share link. Now, in order to get that share link, all right, for your business, you need to go into actual maps. So if you right click, open up maps, what you will see is when you see the business, see how there's a share link here? This is something that has actually changed, but let's not waste any more time here. Now that we have covered the, you know, the UI of the new Google business profile listings, let me go ahead and share with you how you can start to optimize your Google business profile. All right. Previously known as Google, my business, but it's still Google, my business to me. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. And again, I'll cover every aspect of the listing. And of course, I'll give you some tool recommendations as well to go ahead and make you know, spying or taking a look at your competitors a little bit easier. All right. So let's go ahead and get into that. So this is the edit profile. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And previously, when we're talking about the business name, all right, um, what I want to point out to you is I've ran tests on this at seomastermind.org. We have tested Google My Business and Google Business Profiles extensively. I had literally have 200 tests targeting local SEO factors. And what I can tell you about the business name is you can get a short-lived competitive advantage by adding a keyword or a location to the name. However, it is short-lived. So the best recommendation that I could give you here is whatever is on your DBA or whatever you have licensed your business as minus the LLC, that's what I would put in here. That way you're following the guidelines. And when you make it to the top of the three pack, you don't want anybody to be able to say, hey, this particular person's name does not contain the keyword. So you don't want to run into any issues. It's best to just use your name and build up authority over time. Moving into the category, as you can see, you know, I've gotten into numerous different small debates uh, about this particular thing. You know, when we're talking about optimizing a Google business profile, if you take a look in the most competitive markets in some of the most competitive niches, let's say chiropractor, dental, lawyer, real estate, right? Some of the hardest stuff, locksmith. I compete in all these places and I can tell you that when you're optimizing the profile, if there is a particular category, all right, that your competitors have first and it's primary in these markets, they're generally only going to be optimized for one. Sometimes there will be two. So my best advice for optimization is if you really want to win chiropractor in LA, chiropractor in New York, or dental, or whatever your niche is, I would 
focus on one, maximum two. And the reason is, is because you can make the connection for Google inside of products because there's an internal link there. You can link over through products. And this is the way that you can make a connection. Also from past tests, I've also made videos on this. Google is reading your homepage. So it can clearly see that you offer secondary services. It can clearly see that your primary service is what your primary service is and that your secondary services are your secondary services. You do not need to dilute your profile by sticking in three or four separate categories when you really just want to win one and everything else falls underneath that, right? Like you're a chiropractor, but you focus on back pain. Is it worth me putting in back pain or pain clinic? Not really. I'm a chiropractor. I'm just using that as an example. So with that being said, if you want to see what your competitors are doing, I want to point out a really good tool that's completely complimentary. I've been using it since it came out. I'm not promoting it. It's completely free. And the name of this tool is actually called Plepper. And if you take a look at this tool here, I'll share it with you. It's free. You know, I, I get no benefit from showing you this other than it can help you. Uh, when you come inside of the Chrome extension itself, it will actually list out not only the knowledge panel URL, it will not only give you schema information, it will not only give you Yelp information and citation information, but it and also give you gives you everything free plus the categories. So again, let's say we come over here. Let's go ahead and turn this particular tool on. Let me just scroll down. So Plepper is on. Let me see if it's in here. It is. So if we were to look for, I don't know, uh, Plumber New York City. All right. So we have plumbers in New York City. Let's say we were to click on, let's say it's, let's say that this is a competitor. I have no idea who this is. I'm just showing you the tool because this can help with your optimization to see what the leading competitors are doing. You can look at their posting schedule. You can look at their categories. Everything is here. As you can see here, there's now a new button here. See how it says listing details? If I click on listing details, it will give me a litany of different options, talking about place ID, the CID, that's the customer identification number, the business ID, the address, phone number, website, reviews, what their overall rating is, the coordinates, the attributes, the KGID, right? That's the knowledge graph identification number, right? And then as you can see down here, here's their CID. This is all different links to help you succeed online. I'll share with you one more thing. If we come out here and we type in Plumbers NYC and we go over here to Maps, when Plepper is running, it will not only show you individual uh, aspects of different businesses, but it will also, it takes a little bit of time, of course, but it will also uh, generally bring up other information about plumbers or whatever the niche is. All right. So uh, generally it'll pop right up sometimes depending on the amount of information. Sometimes it might take a second, but usually a little box would pop up right here listing out all of the categories, but you do need to fill out the API information. Maybe I didn't, but I just want to point this out to you. It's an absolutely phenomenal tool for you to spy on your competition. Let's get back into the optimizations. That's the first tool I want to share with you, but let's keep going here. All right. So I'll go ahead and leave that up. Uh, we've talked about category and the name. Let's talk about the description. Now, I know that a lot of blog posts that you might read online put a lot of emphasis on this particular section, but I assure you anything that you control, okay, your profile, right, is one of the things that you would control, your posting, right? Anything that you think that you can manipulate, trust me, Google has filtered this. So you can stuff whatever you want in here. I assure you, just fill out the information that's pertinent and could help the customer make a educated decision on maybe working with you. Put information about your business. Put information about where you're located, right? Put information, how long have you been in business? What types of services do you offer? But packing keywords in here is not going to lend the type of ranking increase that it might have did in 2017, all right? So uh, do what makes sense in this section. Do not pack it with keywords. It's non-relevant, I assure you. Let's move on. So the opening date, this here I have seen manipulated time and time again. 
it's I'm going to leave it up to you to make a decision on what you want to put in here. All right. It's in your best interest to stay in the guidelines. Okay. However, it does help customers make decisions when it says the business has been in business for five plus years. Also, if everybody in the map pack has been in business for five plus years and you put your business has only been in one year, right? You're starting at a disadvantage. Okay. We've tested this significantly. This makes a difference. All right. So if you've been in business, you know, my, my recommendation is put how long you've been there, but if you're looking for an edge, you can find it here. Plus it'll say whatever you add, it'll pop up and say, Hey, business has been in business 10 years, five years. You know, a business that's been around a long time can lend credibility, right? And also, too, again, it can play into a factor, ranking factor. If everyone else inside of the map pack has been there for five years and you come along and say, hey, I just opened up, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. But again, my advice is put what is actually true. All right. So let's move on. Contact information. What's fun about this is if you have multiple numbers or multiple agents, you can click this button here and add multiple phone numbers, as you can see here, okay? So you'll have your primary, but you can add up to three phone numbers just by clicking this button here, all right? Now, uh, as we go on here, um, after the phone number, there is website, all right? So if we're taking a look at the website, I have worked with numerous companies in the past that have put in the short link or sometimes Google will change this. All right. If for some reason Google has changed it, or maybe they're showing the Google site, the free site, make sure that the WWW version or the non WW version is matching what your site is actually is. Okay. Like make sure that you have the right URL in here you will see dramatic decreases inside of your profile listing by having the wrong URL in here. As a secondary note, if you have multiple locations or multiple Google business profiles, okay, and, and you have numerous actual verified listings and you're only pointing to one page, I implore you, on those secondary Google business profiles, you can send them to other pages other than the homepage. I would put these into the internal pages, to the internal location pages that make sense tied to the Google business profile. If you only have one, send it to the homepage. If you only have one website but multiple listings, send it to the internal pages that make sense. All right. Moving down the list here, short name. It makes no difference what you put here as far as ranking is concerned, but when do what makes sense, easy and memorable. All right. <clears throat> Location and areas. Okay. So as you can see here, it's going to point out where the business is. All right. Now, like I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, I wanted to give you some tips. I wanted to give you some tricks, stuff that I know no one else is sharing, right? Uh, what I will point out here is the ranking comes from where the pin is, all right? Um, as you can see here, you can adjust the pin. And when you adjust the pin, the address does not uh, change. The ranking comes from where the pin is, okay? So what I'm getting at here is when I verify here, and the verification has been here for at least 60 days, if you're looking for a slight advantage to get closer to what Google is showing for the map pack, you have up to a mile that you can move around the pin. Okay. Do not go farther than a mile. And if you're a regular business owner and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I would advise just leave it how it is. All right. But with that being said, that's a advanced tip that could potentially help or harm you, but I wanted to go ahead and point that out. Most of the time, most business owners will want to leave this exactly how it is. Now, I own and operate a internet marketing services company, a white label company and consulting agency, along with a information business, right? So... I have the United States in here because I service, I used to have different countries in here, right? Um, my business is unique, 
okay? Generally, for all of our clients, what we do is we will put in what is actually the town that they are in, and then we will go broad and put in a state, okay? When you're putting this information in, I know it's going to be, it's going to, you're, you're going to want to put in multiple zip codes, all right? And this is how we used to do it in 2019, 2020. If I was in LA, I would put 10 zip codes in there to cover all of the different regions in LA. Because even though it's the same as Los Angeles, but there's multiple zip codes. As time has progressed, a much better way to optimize is by putting the actual city in. Instead of putting very focused zip codes, if you put the city in, it encompasses all those zip codes. So the optimization could go either way, right? If your business is here in this five zip codes and you don't do all of this other stuff, it might be in your best interest to put the five in. But if you're in LA and you service all of LA, it's much better to write Los Angeles than it is to put in 10 zip codes. I hope this makes sense and I hope that this helps you out. As far as the service area is concerned, usually put in one city or town and then go ultra broad for the state. Okay, let's move on to business hours. Now, business hours, this is very cut and dry. This is going to be the recommendation here is don't fluff this up. Yes, there is a ranking advantage to businesses that are open. What I mean by this is if I have a business, okay, that is open and another business, a competitor is closed. If I'm open before them, I will rank higher than them during my open hours if they're closed. Okay. So having a business that's open longer can give you a short gain in the short term on a daily basis. Can that lead to more calls? Maybe. But again, as you move up in rank, there's there are people watching your accounts, okay? Um, especially as you get into the top spots in more competitive markets. So I would be very cautious about going outside of the guidelines or the recommended guidelines. Put your hours of operation in here. I'm just here to also give you tips and tricks that I've learned over time and from testing and working on live accounts, okay? I'm just giving you the information, all right? With that being said, 24 hours, I'm open 24 hours. I, this biz, I don't, there, this never stops, right? This is 24 seven, seven days a week, every day, <laughs> right? Holiday hours, it is good when you're coming in here and setting up your posts, unless you're setting up a post schedule. We'll talk about setting up post schedules and tools for that. But it is good when you're coming in here to set up posts if you're doing it manually or you're setting up offers or events. We'll talk about those as well. If you are doing this, it's good to come in here and keep your uh, hours updated. Okay. So if you have holiday hours, stuff coming up, you know, you might want to come in here and just go down the list. Like I never shut down. So it's good to keep this fresh. All right. So it looks like the last time I was in here was November. So you're going to want to keep that in there. Now, the next piece that I always fill out is that if you have a physical location and you have a website, that means that you have online hours. Your reg Whatever your hours are, if you have a website, I always put in 24. Depending on the business type, depending on if maybe say it's a chiropractor where he sees people online or they make online reservations, we'll put in the hours of operation that they actually do that online. Okay. Um, but this again is completely up to you, but you want to add as much information as you can. All right. And this is where you'll do this. This is your online hours. We always do regular hours, holiday hours, and then we always put in, uh, online hours. Okay. So regular holiday and online. Now, as you can see, there is a magnitude of different types. All right. Do what makes sense for your business as we go on. All right. There's more again, it's all about optimization. We want to tell as much to Google as we possibly can. So when we start taking a look at, you know, this particular section, um, I, I actually fill this stuff out. All right. If you identify as any of these, you do, we tested this. There's not a ranking advantage by going in here and clicking yes to everything. 
right? There's not a ranking advantage of coming in here and clicking yes to one. And there's not a ranking demotion for saying no. Do what makes sense for you, okay? Fill this out. You don't get an edge by saying that you're a veteran or a woman or there's there's no favoritism on Google, all right? So do what makes sense here, all right? Uh, the very next thing is the accessibility. Again, follow suit in this particular section, but don't just leave it blank. Fill it out. Are you wheelchair accessible? Do you have a restroom? Do you have seating? Yes or no, right? So take care of that. Uh, the amenities. So has a general neutral bathroom? I do. Yeah, I do. The crowd, LGBTQ friendly? Yes or no, right? This is up to you. Ch transgender safe place? Is it fine? Yes or no? Put it in, right? Um, these are newer things that have not been here. Uh, I would say in the last six months, um, they've really added the different options. Uh, next is going to be planning. Do Is an appointment required? Yes or no. So go ahead and fill that out. The next thing is the service options. So this is actually a little bit of an edge. Offer online appointments, on-site services available. <clears throat> yes, right? So do you offer more ways for customers to interact with the business? When you offer more ways for customers to interact with your business, you get certain enhancements. Enhancements could include appointment links in your profile, um, could be one of them, okay? So if you actually offer these, go ahead and put that in as a yes, and this will take care of the basic optimizations in the about, the contact, locations, hours, and then the more section, okay? Now what we will move into is talking about reviews. Now, the this video was centralized around optimization, okay? What I will tell you is this. I know a lot of uh, SEOs will put a lot of emphasis on the response. The response does not carry as much weight as the actual review, okay? With that being said, not responding can be a slight issue. I think it's best practice to go in there and at least respond to reviews with a thank you, give the, you know, state the customer by name. And if you can talk about the service that you provided, keywords, then I would do that. But I have not seen by going in here and responding with keywords or locations, do I get an edge or a ranking advantage? However, if you flip that over, if you are running a review campaign, right? You work with multiple customers and you're able to maybe help assist get reviews for your clients or for your own business. It is certainly in your best interest to not only include location information, but also include primary services and entities that are associated with your business and use the name and the state of where you're located. So real quick, entities, your name, your brand name, LSI words, like anything that's uh, relevance equals rank, right? So relevance words, trust words, brand words, locations, primary keywords and variations are helpful, but it needs to read like a normal review, all right? So don't tell them that, hey, just pack all these words in here. Don't do that. But focus on location, primary, LSI, and entities. You will see a ranking it. Uh, advantage. Okay. Uh, with that being said, this up here, what you're looking to do, these are, what you really want is your primary service to be repeated more than three times. So you can grab an entity. Okay. Uh, what you really want to do is if you're trying to move up fast and you're gathering up reviews, take a look at the top competitors that are in the three pack currently and see what's popping up for them here. These are the exact phrases and words that you want to see repeated in your reviews more th than three times. So by more than three customers, okay? Reviews are infinitely powerful and helpful, but do not curate reviews. Get them organically or your account will be punished. Just saying, 
All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next aspect, messages. Now, messages are a interesting, uh, I don't necessarily want to go in there because it might show people's phone numbers and whatnot, but messaging is an enhancement. Messaging can be taken away. What I've learned with messaging is if you're going to turn it on, make sure that you're answering your messages every single day. You don't have to answer them within an hour, but you need to answer them the same day. The best way to do this is have it attached to the, your phone. Set up notifications on your phone. It's the best thing to do. Connect to your Gmail, set up your notifications. When somebody messages you or texts you, you'll receive it on your phone. All right. It's the best way to do it. It is an enhancement. You're being very um, attentive to your clients or your customers. Interaction from customers moves the needle. So we want to make sure we're focusing on this. Taking care of photos. All right. I've seen a litany, a plethora, a, a magnitude of different pieces of information hyper-focusing on geocentric or geospecific images that are uploaded by you, the business owner. I have not personally seen in customer accounts um, or inside of test accounts where the actual owner or the agency manager, by uploading images that contain specific tags that I control, have given me a ranking advantage. However, getting images on your account from customers, right, uh, in your reviews, stuff that is from actual users that are in the geo, they're on their phone and they leave a review and upload an image, or they're on their phone or on their actual, you know, residential IP in your town and they leave you a review, or they upload an image of your job that you did, that's a ranking advantage. Anything that you do, I assure you, you know, for the most part, you can't manipulate rankings. Like uploading a bunch of images to your own profile, I sure you isn't going to help you. However, being consistent and filling out all of the information on the client side can be very helpful. All right. Uh, I'm not saying that there is no value. You clearly want to have, you know, uh, the business photos, jobs, your services, your video of inside, pictures of the outside of the office. You want to take care of all of this, right? You want to be able to fill out everything, have your logo, have your cover, you know, take videos if you can. And you want to have a nice amount of images. However, you know, going that extra mile is not as powerful as having customers in certain geolocations add uh, images to the actual profile or inside the reviews, okay? That's what moves the needle, all right? Um, performance, let's talk about this, all right? Things have changed inside of here a little teeny tiny bit. Uh, this particular change has been here for quite some time where you're going to see this, like they updated the analytics uh, probably about a year, year and two months ago, all right? When you come inside of here, uh, what you want to do is you want to click on this button here, see more, and then you're able to see how people are actually finding your business. Okay. Uh, so this is how you do it. All right. So this is the analytics side. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on performance and you could see the overview, how many phone calls, how many messages, how many bookings, the directional requests, right? And then also website clicks. All right. You'll be able to see all of that. You'll also be able to see for maybe future ad campaigns, how are the clicks and the phone calls being generated? Is it from mobile? Is it from desktop? Is it from Maps? And is it from Maps Mobile? This is a insight into if you want to run ads and you want them to be profitable and perform well, not only do we know what keywords we want to run, but we also know what platforms we want to run them on. All right. And I think that this is one of the reasons why it's this is a product, because everything on Google is a product. Why would they give us this data to better inform us for the ads? That's why. Right. So with that being said, this is why it's very helpful and it can be helpful. And to speak on ads. I get asked this a lot. Right. When you're talking about your business or you're doing SEO for a client, 
You want to be in three places, right? Ads make sense for your Google business profile. Running ads to the Google business profile makes sense as well, whether you're doing to an offer, whether you're doing it to an event, right? But what I'm getting at here is you want to be in organic, you want to be in ads, and then you want to be in maps, right? And the reason for that is so the EPC, right? The potential money per click when somebody searches for your business or your services that you offer, the probability of someone clicking on your business and you getting the customer drastically increases when you're in more places, right? So uh, it can be helpful. This isn't a Google uh, ads course or, or, or video in any stretch of the imagination, but definitely take this into consideration, all right? Now, when we're talking about products, all right, as you saw, we clicked on this here. Products are often overlooked by business owners because when you're a service business, to you, it doesn't, and, and even to me at first, until I started adding them, it doesn't make sense, right? Because there's a service section, why would I add products? But if you're a service business, then your service is your product. Your product is your service, right? And the reason why this can be so powerful is because it gives you not only an opportunity to get an enhancement in the SERP, and here's what I mean by this. You're able to get an enhancement that goes one, two, three, four, your four primary keywords, which sit on top of your actual profile. As you can see here, explore the categories. And what I would highly recommend is when you're looking at your website, you know your main navigation, right? You know how you have your services, your four most profitable or your, your fastest moving services or products. These are your top categories. And when you click on your category, you're listed out. These are my top services, SEO cont uh, content link building, content writing, consulting services, and basic SEO services, right? And what's really powerful about this is not only do I get an enhancement of the categories, but I also get a link directly over to the product. Now I'm able to optimize my profile even deeper. Also, not only can I put in a small amount of words plus get a link over to my actual website so they, so they can convert, when I do this inside of services and I put in every single service, it's actually added as a custom. It dilutes the profile. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this is products. What I highly recommend is put in your top four keywords or your top four services that you provide that you really want to win. Put those in as top level categories. And how you go about doing this is when you edit your products, you'll come inside of here and you're actually going to add your product name. You'll create a new category, which will be your product name, and then you'll fill out the rest of the information. You'll add your photo. You can add the price if you want. I never do. You put in your primary keyword again, and then you can add a link where they can order, they can buy, they can learn more or get an offer, right? It's a direct connection to a conversion, period, end, right? Like this is a good opportunity to not only hyper optimize your profile, and get more probability of ranking, but also have a higher probability of converting a customer, okay? With services, you don't get this extra enhancement. So this is massively powerful, and I highly recommend that you spend some time doing this, okay? The next thing that I want to point out is, like I mentioned before, I, you have a primary category. Everything else that you add is considered... Uh, this must be, see, they're always trying to add this in here, right? So you have a primary category. I didn't accept these, nor am I going to, right? Uh, I have a primary category, which is internet marketing service. I've connected and talked about everything that I actually want. If I go in here and I add these, they're looked at as a custom category. When you start adding all that stuff in there, I have never seen ever, ever, by packing this full, again, this goes back to, hey, I have some control of something. I'm going to try to be clever. I'm going to pack keywords and everything in here. I'm going to put location services in here. Like I assure you, there's no ranking advantage. You're only diluting your profile. You have one primary category 
Everything else is secondary and it's going to be talked about on the website. If you want to make a connection, the connection is done inside of products. Nobody's going to see this except for Google. No one's going to see this list except, except for Google. Now, if you're doing home services, some of these services might pop up inside of your reviews. Hey, this, this person offers this, this person offers this, this person offers this. But <laughs> the dilution isn't worth that little bit of extra. It's just not, right? So my best recommendation is stick with your primary, okay? See, that, and then this is another piece I want to point out to you. Google will come in here. And they will say, oh, hey, we, we see that you offer this. And a lot of business owners will be like, oh, whew, man, they're doing me a favor, right? <laughs> Every time that I've stuffed this inside of any account, I got a demotion for the primary keyword. Every single time. So much to the effect that I was like, man, should I go buy ads? I'm not getting any more calls or traffic, <laughs> right? Please do yourself a favor. Stick with your primary category. Don't dilute anything. Don't add secondary categories in here or custom categories or services. Stick with the primary. Make your connections through products. All right. I've talked about that enough. All right. Uh, let's just go in here and get. let's whack all these while we're here. Uh, I, they consistently will do this. They'll keep recommending them. Um, I hate to say it, but they're... <laughs> I don't want to say it, but their goal is not to help <laughs> um, at all. <laughs> um, but I leave that up to you. So as you can see here, look, my, my point exactly, my friends, right? I have a primary category. They're like, hey, do you want to dilute the profile, right? Add a custom service, add it in here. It's not in the list. Do you want to you want to try to manipulate us? Go ahead. Add it in there. You know what? Here, we'll even recommend it. Go ahead. Go ahead. You get what I'm saying here? I, I promise you. Go ahead and try it out and you see. But uh, I, I don't recommend it at all. Um, but that's enough about that, my friends. Booking. Now, you have a lot of opportunities here. Okay. Uh, you have to find what third-party calendars or maybe you have a menu, maybe you run a restaurant. Uh, I know chiropractors have their own. I know lawyer firms and cottages, they have their own booking apps. Consultants uh, like myself or agencies like myself, we have like Calendly is, is accepted. So there are multiple lists. If you just do a quick search on Google, accepted third party appointment apps for Google, my business, you will find a list uh, out here, 13 Google My Business tools and platforms, the best appointment scheduling apps. You can take a look at Zapier. I mean, there's multiple lists out there that have already been curated. Find one that you're happy with, or maybe there might even be one that you're already currently working with. But having that extra appointment link inside of your profile, I'll show you what mine looks like. It's very it's very appealing. You get an extra link. You get an extra opportunity to convert a potential customer. It's very helpful. I, I enjoy it a lot. As you can see here, we have appointments. There's Calendly. This goes directly over to my calendar to be able to talk to me. It's another conversion action that's built into the profile, and I would highly recommend taking advantage of it if you offer appointments online, all right, or even in person and you allow them to book. If you can get a third-party appointment scheduling service that actually works with a Google business profile, definitely set it up. As a helpful hint, even if you're really comfortable with a certain one, all right, generally you can set up a zap from here over, all right? So there's, there are workarounds. Just go ahead and look up the workaround for the tool that you currently have. You'll probably find it, all right? If you don't have any other option, all right? Uh, the next piece that I want to point out, again, this is just calls. You know, this is really uh, cut and dry. Like, do you want to see the call history? Do you want to see how many calls, where they're coming from? I turn it off. Um, it's not something that I need for for me for this listing. Uh, but I have plenty of clients that want to track every single aspect, which as they should. Um, 
So it's up to you if you want to turn it on or not, or you want to go ahead and forward those calls to a third party uh, system like a call scaler, uh, call rail, stuff like this. Okay. Uh, next is questions and answers. Um, I see a lot around this. Um, we, we tested this quite, um, extensively. I think we ran five or six tests on this where we actually acted as the business owner and put all of the top questions in there. And then we actually had secondary accounts or customers answer the questions. I've even gone in as a business owner and then answered my own questions. It's not against the guidelines to set up your own questions or answer the own questions. Why? Because it's very helpful for the end user. You're helping the customer make an informed decision. Okay. Uh, now, is this a ranking edge? When you have a customer that has previously left a review on your account and they ask a question before or after they leave that review, after they've interacted with the profile, we have seen that not only will their reviews become the most relevant, but it does seem as though that if there were keywords in there, you get a slight ranking edge. So um, if you have a customer that has interacted with the profile before and it's been tracked, vetted, and verified, yeah, there's a slight ranking edge here by them leaving a keyword-specific question, all right, or a keyword-specific answer to a question that you ask them, all right? So uh, filling this out can be beneficial, but again, don't use and abuse this. I wouldn't go in here and fill out as many as you can and load it up with keywords. It'll be demoted or denoted, all right? So... Be cautious here, but it's definitely worth having because it's helpful for the customer. All right. So with that being said, we'll move on to the uh, updates. All right. So this is where you will come in here and you can create your posts. You can create offers or you can add an event. Now, offers, you can set a timeline. Okay. The offer, as you can see here, you'll have your offer title. Okay. You can add an image and there's a start and an end date. Okay. You can also add in specific details about the offer. You can even add a coupon code. So you'll know, Hey, like you could make it say Google business profile or GBP and then put the date in there. And that's the code. Then you'll know if customers come with that code, Hey, they got it from Google business profile you know, you're, I'm sure you're very creative. As you come down in here, you can put in your terms of service and also a link over to claim and utilize the coupon. Now, note when you're filling these offers out, okay, the offers you will see show up right here in this section. All right. The offers will stick around on the profile for the entire time that you actually load up. So when you take a look at the offer here, you know, you start and you end, you can schedule them for an entire year. Okay. So a year from start till end, they can sit for a year, but note, it's going to show up on your profile on desktop, at least for that entire time. All right. So make sure your picture is evergreen. Make sure that something doesn't say only the month of December, and then it's going to be up for a year, right? Be mindful about these things because they stick around. Uh, the next piece is going to be the events, okay? Very, 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 very similar to an offer, but this is an event. This could be a 10% off for this week. This could be a 5% off for next week, right? What I have seen with these two, with these two types, these two that we're talking about, offers and events, offers, the advantage is it gets a lot more impressions and it will bring more calls. Why? Because it's on the front of your profile it's, it could be there for an entire year. The events, however, they stick around and there's something internal that it seems like Google gives those an extra push. So what you'll notice is if you're doing a consistent posting schedule, say you're doing daily or bi-daily, a regular post or what is called an update. If you create an event, you'll notice that it'll get a couple extra, depending on your account, maybe 30, an extra hundred more than your usual posts do. And I think that is because they almost, it's like they push it out or they show it more like for more queries. 
but you will get more impressions. Now, will that lead to more sales or more calls? In some cases, yes. So the events have merit and power. They get seen by a lot more people. The offers stick around for a lot longer. It's a nice way to keep a nice relevant post up on your profile page. And then the updates, these are your regular posts that you'll come in here and create by daily or daily. Uh, as a note, I want to point this out because I get this question a lot. I want to point out two things briefly about posts. First and foremost, all right, you know, people don't want to have to come up with content every day. All right. I might have spelled that wrong. But if we take a look at McDonald's, because posting might not give you a massive ranking increase, but all of the posts get eyeballs eyeballs could potentially turn into a customer, a call, a lead, a sale, right? Take it from McDonald's, all right? If I take a look at this McDonald's here, in, uh, I'm in where's this one showing up at? This is showing up in Tamaqua, very small town here in Pennsylvania. Scroll down to their posts, all right? Take a look at them. See the photos? Now, let's go back out to maps.google.com, okay? And let's search for a McDonald's New York, New York. I'm in Pennsylvania, as you saw. So let's just find one. You want to do this one? Doesn't matter. Scroll down. See this? See this? They have thousands of locations. They post most of the time the exact same post every day across all of the McDonald's. There are lots of businesses that do this. So if you want to have consistency without having to do a lot of work, follow the McDonald's model. Okay. You're not going to get in trouble. You're allowed to keep your business updated. Google gives you this. All right. Is this the best? I'll leave, I'll leave that up to you to decide. I know that it's efficient and fast. Another trick that you can do, I'll go ahead and show this to you. If we come inside here and we're talking about um, your updates here. Oh, they took, see, that's a, um, see, that's a change. Let me scroll down a little bit here. If you click on this, all right, you have to do it this way. You used to be able to get in, in the old way. We used to be able to see them all. Now you have to go into this. So as you can see here, here's what I did. So let's say you make your post, your update, all right? When you come over here to the side, all right, let's say you don't want to have to keep uploading and going through all this hassle every day, even if it's the same post. You can always come inside of your posts, right? Let's say it's Google My Business Management. Let's say it's does DRTFDA matter for Google rankings. You can click on the edit, okay? We could go into here, go to, I don't know, learn more. How about at, at chrispalmermayer.com forward slash sign up, right? We can add our little photo in here if we wanted to. You don't even have to add a photo, but let's say you wanted to. Okay. Uh, let's open this up. All right, bear with me. And now let's go ahead and post this. So I didn't have to write it. I didn't have to redo it. The only thing that I did is I went in here, see it retains the views. So the URL is the same, okay? As you, just like your website. This, this is a URL on Google's website. This post is your post. On your website, when you update a post, do you want to change the URL? No way, I'll lose authority, right? Same thing goes with your Google business profile. If you want to keep it fresh, but keep the same URL, you can go in here and edit. You can change the photo, you can change the text, but you'll retain the views. You'll keep the same URL and you'll keep the authority of the post. Why would you want to do this? Because it can be beneficial to build links or share your posts on social, maybe even on web 2.0s maybe embed them across web 2.0s. I'm sure you're very um, creative with this, right? You could see the advantage to having the same URL 
for a very long time and have it build authority inside your profile. Okay. This is a way to do that, but keep everything fresh. All right. Or you can always follow the McDonald's model, or I'm going to show you one more way to keep everything fresh. And I want to let you know up front, I'm not sponsoring them. I'm not promoting them. I don't have a coupon. There's no links, right? I don't show things for affiliate. It's not my business. I show it to help you. Okay. There's two things that I use inside my business. One of them is called Buffer. Okay. Uh, Buffer is a tool here. I'll, I'll just go in here and I'll show you here. One of them is called Buffer. And if you take a look here, so Buffer is a tool that you can actually attach your Google business profile along with a lot of your other uh, social media accounts. When I have a small account that doesn't want any other social medias, I'll usually come into Buffer. Another thing that you can use for automating your post is called Zapier. Okay. Zapier, very, these are well-respected tools in the marketplace. You can read their reviews if you want. This tool works as well. But if you want a little bit more control, you want to watch your rankings, you want to auto post, you want to be able to geotag your images, right? You want some extra stuff. What I would maybe suggest is a tool called Local Viking, okay? So Local Viking is another tool that will allow you to post, it'll allow you to geotag your images, and it'll allow you to see geogrids to be able to track your results and the performance of your account. Again, I'm not sponsored by any of these tools, uh, but they're good tools and I use them in my own agency. All right. So those are some of those tools. Um, let's keep rolling here and we'll see how far we are. All right. We talked about, we talked about each of the, uh, we talked about the updates. We talked about the tools. I showed you the McDonald's model. I also showed you how to keep it fresh add offers. I talked about that and how they can be powerful and events. All right. We talked about all of that. Uh, we pretty much went through all of the aspects. I'll share with you one more thing. Uh, when you click on these three dots here, uh, you'll see something called notifications. Now notifications are completely up to you. Uh, get SMS notifications when customers uh, send a message. So remember I said uh, you can connect everything to your phone to get uh, no like notified, like, Hey, somebody left me a message. Maybe somebody left me a review. Maybe somebody messaged me on the messaging app, right? You want to answer them in 12 hours or less. You want to make sure that this is turned on and you have the right number to a phone that you can actually get access to on a consistent basis. And it's inside of those three dots in your profile here. So you click this, click on notifications. You will want to go ahead and turn this on. Now there are some other options in here. Okay. So you have important updates, right? All of this stuff is up to you. Read through these. I'm going to leave this up to you, but what I would recommend is turn this one on. Okay. Uh, but if you don't want to be bothered, like I like to, you can see what I have on customer messages, customer reviews, questions and answers and bookings, right? That's the stuff that I want to know about. All right. Everything else I'm not interested in, right? Quotes, um, photos, business profile, health, insights, news and tips, posts, reminders I will turn on, surveys and pilots. Like these are the ones that I have on. I'll leave up the rest up to you. Okay. Uh, send feedback, help and support. We can come into here. Now, once we're inside of here, I don't know if you saw how I did that. Once you're inside of the notifications tab, if you click on this, you can come into your business profile settings. Okay. Now when you click on your business profile settings, all right, I get this question a lot. Goodness sakes, if you were to get suspended, what you'll want to do is come inside of here inside your profile and you'll go inside of advanced settings. This is the ID that everyone that you're always looking for. It's this ID right here. And, and in the new platform, this is how you see it. Even if you're suspended, Okay. Now inside of here, there's a lot of other settings. All right. We'll talk about these. So Google assistant calls, uh, bookings from customers. Yep. Automated calls to keep your business profile up to date, right? Phone number. Uh, don't show customers your phone number on your, 
that's up to you if you don't want to do that. Labels, there's no ranking advantage to having labels. Store codes, again, there's no ranking advantage to stuffing stuff in here. I know back in the uh, caveman days, this used to be a common practice. I assure you there's no effect. I tested it. So th there's no effect. that It, it does nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you could add it in to keep track and have a, you know, if you want to add it, add it, but you're not going to get an edge. Okay. If we, if I could, it would be in there. <laughs> so uh, believe that uh, when we come into managers, you know what managers are. If you need to add someone else to maybe help your account, this is where you do that at. Okay. Um, you know, maybe you want someone to help you with the account or you want to give someone access. It's a little bit different than it used to be. This is how you add managers. So people can help you out. Uh, remove your business profile. I, I'm a, perhaps that's not what you're going to want to do. Linked accounts, see and manage link requests from other Google products, such as Google ads or merchant center. So you can click on this to see what else is connected. So I have my ads account connected. I've ran ads in here a few times. Okay. Um, we'll go back one. All right. And everything else is pretty much been covered in today's video. Uh, I think I covered every single aspect, um, of the Google, my business, Google business profile update, uh, for 2023, I've covered everything from, you know, editing the profile from the business name all the way down. We've also talked about reviews. We've talked about messaging, photos, videos, you know, the performance tab. We've talked about editing products and services, you know, booking features, calling features. We've talked about updates, events, offers, posting. I've talked about tools. I've given you tips, tricks, hacks, ways to rank, get phone calls, get leads. I hope it helps you out. My name is Chris Palmer. If there was anything that I could ever help you with, especially related to local SEO, Google Maps, Google Business Profile, SEO, ranking your website, anything digital marketing, SEO related, I would love to help you out. Feel free to go ahead and ask in the section below. And I always look forward to seeing you in the next Google Business Profile, how to optimize your Google My Business listing in 2023 video. Have a blessed day. I'll see you in the next one. And if you need any, if you need a little bit more help, all right, go to Calendly forward slash Chris Palmer Marketing. If you need done for you services, go to services.chrispalmermarketing.com. If you just want to learn more, go to the SEO mastermind.org. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.